My name's John Howard, and I'm a specialist dealer in 17th, 18th and 19th century British pottery. I'm located here in a showroom in Woodstock, and I formed the business with my wife, Linda, in 1975. The building that we're standing in is a medieval building, and we're just 200 yards away from the World Heritage Site of Blenheim Palace. One of the most important developments in British pottery was the introduction of Delftware in the 17th century. And here we have some examples, uh, mainly of decorative charges, with have a distinctive blue dash rim. These pieces were made for decoration only and feature flowers, royalty, sometimes religions such as the Adam and Eve charges. This cabinet here holds a collection of English slipware from the 17th and 18th centuries. Now the slip decoration varies, this is a comb decorated piece and these pieces here are in the more artistic calligraphic style. These pieces sit really well in a traditional country setting but they sit at home equally well in a modern setting. In this cabinet are two salt glazed bears made in Staffordshire around about 1750. The heads of these figures uh, lift off and the base would be filled with uh, beer and you could actually drink from the head of the bear. Uh, these were often used in taverns where bear baiting events took place and this barbaric sport as it was called was actually banned around about 1835 but we need to look at these things in the context of the period and they're still renditions of fantastic folk art from that period. We always carry a range of early creamware. All these pieces were made in the late 18th century. Creamware was invented by Josiah Wedgwood, but the Yorkshire potteries, uh, such as Elise Pottery, also copied him and made these wares. And as you can see, they're all in a silver form, which is a timeless classic. One of the interesting developments at the end of the 18th century was the introduction of decorative figures. And here we have a range of figures that were made by such fantastic potters as Obadiah Sherratt, John Walton and the Wood family. These very distinctive pieces have what's called on the back, it's called bocage. They're really photographs in time full of social context. Here we have a pig tithe group. This is a very common subject at the time. You can see the farmer and his wife and the vicar who comes around once a year to collect the rent in the form of a tithe. The tithe is in fact one tenth of the produce of the farmer. And here you see some eggs, some sheaves of corn, and the farmer is holding a pig. The wife is saying to the farmer, don't give the vicar the pig until he takes the child. And this, of course, is a satirical take on the church at the time. Here's another bocage figure known as courtship. The gentleman is offering his lady friend here a ring in the hope that she will accept his offer for an engagement or perhaps marriage. These figures are beautifully enameled and coloured and are composed of many parts. They're quite decorative pieces. The colours are absolutely beautiful on this piece and with the best quality enamels. The glaze is a pearlware glaze and this is one of the most commercial pieces that you can find. It captures the spirit of the period beautifully. This remarkable piece is a wassail pot. Now wassailing uh, was a tradition that was localised really in the counties of Somerset, Hereford and in South Wales. And these pieces were used to celebrate the bringing in of the new year. These would have been taken door to door. They were full of ale and would be consumed as you was going round celebrating the incoming new year. This piece was specially commissioned for William James and it was made at the Clay Pits Pottery in Cardiff. The chap on the top there might be William James himself who is sat by a table of objects and he's surrounded by chickens and birds and a fox and the fox has got a mouse uh, in its mouth. The pot is scraffito decorated which is a technique often used on slipware. The pot itself would be dipped into the white slip which is underneath the red earthenware body. And then the decoration would be scratched or etched into the piece before it was finally finished with this beautiful honey glaze. The pot bears the name of Williams, which is inscribed in the base. 
and we know that he made wassail pots at the Clay Pits Pottery in the 1830s where he charged one guinea for the production of them. This one is highly complex and would have cost more than that one guinea. I hope you've enjoyed looking around the showroom with me at these various pieces of British pottery, which is one of the biggest collections on the market today. We've only touched the surface of what is here really, because there's so many uh, other styles and types of pottery. If ever you're in the Oxford area, you'd be most welcome to come down and visit the showroom and look at these beautiful pieces from the past in more detail. <laughs>